What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another Laddie's Game Preview video. Uh, I know I just made one, but people have found an even longer preview. So, yeah. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Uh, there are already two preview videos which you need to watch before watching this one. Um, or you need to read the previews that you've already seen. Um, we're at a point where Jessica has met a boy uh, who they're going to be build a robot together in robotics class. That's basically all we know. Uh, Jessica gets called Zombie Girl. Uh, Jessica has a pendant that kind of heals people but is also draining her life force. Let's get back into this this longer, even longer preview. Uh, it's, it's insane that we're getting this much of the story. It's like, it's revealing lore, which is weird. Anyway. Uh, so we end off with like, I can't believe we get to build our own mini robot. Oh, perfect. Uh, after school, Jessica was seated at a table in the co school courtyard waiting for Robert. Oh yeah, I can actually see the preview for this one. So I'm, I'm sorry about the last video, but this is going to be a lot better. Uh, they'd had a couple of class sessions to plan the bot project and decided to make a mini rolling bot that carried items on its back and was controlled with a remote. The catch was that they had to lift the tray. They have to have the tray lift up and down. Robert had taken apart an old remote control car and discovered the components to make their bot active. Robert dropped a cardboard box on the table, causing Jessica to recoil. He pulled out his old remote control car. I asked Miss, Mrs. Willoughby how much we could use from, how much we can use from this on the bot. She gave me a list of what we can and can't use, Robert said, handing Jessica the paper. Today he wore a pale yellow shirt that buttoned up down the front with grey sweats. Jessica wore her typical all black outfit. Jessica took the list he handed her. We need to find other components for the ones we have to replace. Yeah, I know. What are you doing later? Mrs Willoughby wants us to salvage as many components as we can instead of purchasing them. Maybe we can go to the junkyard and see what we find. Oh no. Oh no, it's the junkyard from To Be Beautiful. It definitely is. I swear to God. Jessica quickly blinked a few times. Um, wait, was this? Oh, this was this was Robert speaking. Interesting. I know we need a couple of string of uh, springs, something to be used as a tray, maybe old wiring. I I can't. She stumbled out. Why can't she? Huh? Robert looked at her with a slight frown. I can't go there. I I have to work at the hospital. I to work. I forgot. Robert shrugged. Oh well, we can go another day. We have time. Maybe. Oh, sorry. Uh, maybe. She is an Eleanor victim. Right? Could could she be a victim of Eleanor that we didn't see in Fazbear Frights, and she is actually made of scrap metal, but the pendant could be keeping her alive? I don't know, I, d I don't know. This is weird, this is very weird. Um, oh, well, we can go another day, we have time. No, Jessica said a little too sternly. She could feel her insides begin to shake. She started to pack her notebook into her bag. I have to go. Robert stared at her with surprise. Now? I thought we were going to work on the project. We made a schedule. We should keep to it if we want to finish on time. Can't today. Tomorrow. You go to the junkyard, okay? It's not my thing. Alright, it's for the project, you know? It's not like I, ha I like to hang out at junkyards either. Uh, are you okay? He grabbed Jessica's wrist, and Jessica pulled away as if stung. Are you- sorry. Are you sick or something? You look a little pale. I don't feel well. Do you want me to walk you home? It's not a problem, I can come with you. Maybe you shouldn't be by yourself. No, I don't need help, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, if she doesn't have a family, does she have a home? <laughs> that might be a stupid question, right? Or is she, like, living by herself? She grabbed her bag and quickly rushed from the table. She felt faint, as if she could just kneel over at any second. She managed to make it off school grounds and lean against a tree for support. She grabbed her pendant with a shaky hand and closed her eyes. Her breath filtered out of her mouth quickly. Everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay. After a few moments, Jessica managed to calm her breathing. 
She licked her dry lips as she settled down. She didn't know what had come over her. She'd learned to steady her emotions, or at least mask them from others. She couldn't let her emotions erupt like that again. It made her too vulnerable, and when she was vulnerable, she couldn't think straight. She set off toward the cemetery. The wind had picked up and was blowing her hair wildly. The cemetery had become her sanctuary in the few months, in the recent, month, in the recent months. A quiet, peaceful place. Is this a home? No way. Wait. Maybe, maybe them calling her zombie girl is actually like an actual thing. Why does she live in a cemetery? When she stepped into the cemetery, she often stopped to read the headstones to get familiar with the souls who had been laid to rest. She wondered about her own grave. Oh, oh, sorry. And what her stone would read. She doesn't have a grave yet. That would have been a weird story if she like visited her gr or she lived in her grave. She actually was a zombie. Oh, ma that's a good theory. Could she actually be a zombie that's been revived using the power of the, the pendant? But whenever she scrapes off the pendant, there's less power coming from that pendant. And so she's turning back into her dead self. That's such a weird premise for a story and I like it. It was more than likely she would never get a burial. As she strolled through the graves, her mind drifted back to Robot. Uh, robot. Her mind drifted back to Robert. She hadn't. <laughs> she hadn't really met a boy so kind and confident before. If she let herself, she could start to like him, which was not possible now. Maybe in her old life, she could have opened herself to having a true friendship, maybe something more. But that all changed the day she made a choice. And each day, she was doing her best to make up for that choice. She had a purpose now, and she was sticking to it. She made her way to the furthest and oldest of family crypts. Uh, there, hidden among the graves, was a small mausoleum made of stone with dark, stained glass windows. Old, dried vines covered the top and hung down the sides of the structure, patched with white cobwebs. She gripped the rusted handle and leaned her foot on the bottom of the door, pushing with everything she had in her. The heavy door creaked open and scraped along the, do uh, along the floor, Dust particles twirled in the sunlight. She pulled out her small flashlight and stepped inside, and pushed the door closed until she was surrounded by the dark. She switched on the flashlight and walked to the back of the small enclosure, passing what she assumed were family, well, a family of dead people named Holloway, then turned around a corner to a small sitting area that was made of stone. She'd cleared all the cobwebs of as many spiders as she could manage in this little hideaway. The groundskeeper neglected this section of the cemetery since the graves were over a century old. She kneeled down on her sleeping bag and grabbed a pack of matches to light three yellow candles placed off to the side. She dropped her book bag and sat on the sleeping bag and pillow. Here she could let down her guard. No one, should, no one could see her. No one could judge her. No one could wonder about her at all. She was safe for now. Next to her, she had a duffel bag of her signature black clothes, a small overnight kit with some makeup, a hairbrush, toothbrush, and toile toiletries. She kept her life simple, minimal. She had one small item from her old life. She reached in the bag and took out a white rabbit's foot and let it dangle from her finger on the short chain. She used to carry it with her everywhere, thinking it brought her good luck. Now she didn't believe in good luck but it was a small reminder of who she used to be and who she would never be again. She lay down on the sleeping bag and let herself rest before work. This preview is massive. Are you kidding me? Okay, it's almost done. Jessica noticed Nurse Macy was humming under her breath at the nurse's station while she was performing her mopping duties. It was mindless, really. Mindless in a kind, a weird kind of way. Weird was the theme of her life these days. But what really concerned her was the fatigue that weighed down upon every inch of her body. Her grip on the mop was shaky, and even though she moved at a slow pace, she was tired. It was a bone-deep exhaustion that had been becoming more and more frequent each day. She used to have so much strength and now she often wished for the time when the pendant had become a whole, when it had been a whole heart, and she'd been full of energy. It is draining her. The truth was, she'd been busy the last few nights with the patients. She lifted a shaky hand to the pendant that lay under her shirt. 
It was definitely smaller now, thinner. A tremor of fear vibrated down her spine. She lifted her chin. She could do this, she told herself. With as much strength as she could muster, she continued to push the mop. To and fro, to and fro. Hi, Jessica. It's a lovely day, isn't it? Nurse Macy mused, a wisp of a blonde curl shifting on her forehead as she walked over to her. Nurse Macy always wore scrubs in shades of orange, blue, green or purple. Sometimes the patterns had funny characters or animal prints. Today they were cats making silly faces on her top. Her smile was welcoming. Uh, and even though Jessica did her best to keep her distance, Nurse Macy had this energy that pulled others toward her. Jessica nodded. You want to know why it's a lovely day? Nurse Macy asked. Jessica paused and looked at her expectedly. Most of our patients in this wing have improved in some way, she said with a bright smile. They're eating, even smiling. Most times there's a heavy sadness that you can feel around this floor, but now, today is a good day. When there are smiles and meals being eaten, um, and pain has decreased, it's like magic. In my line of work, you have to take the wins when you can get them, Jessica. Do you remember that? Take the wins when you can get them. Jessica liked that. She'd remember that advice. Nurse Macy gazed into Jessica's eyes. How are you feeling today, Jessica? Jessica looked away. Good. That's nice. Anything new going on in your life? How's school? Jessica gripped tightly on the mop. Nothing new. Everything good. Glad to hear it. Well, juicy calls. See you later, Gator. Jessica watched her wave off to, uh, uh, to visit another patient. Even though she enjoyed being around Nurse Macy, it was getting harder to avoid her direct questions about her personal life. She suddenly saw the nurse come to a halt right in the middle of the floor. Sheesh, what's going on with all this junk, Jessica? There's an old fork on the floor. Would you mind cleaning it up? Between this and the weird flakes. Ah. <laughs> ah. Okay. This is, this is getting good. This is getting good. Uh, the reviewers of this book said it was a solid 8 out of 10. Like, this, this was the best story uh, of all of them uh, in the first book. So, it's looking good so far. I'm... I'm concerned about what's going on at the scrapyard, why Jessica can't go there. We do know that the scrapyard has connections with Eleanor. That's like a very big thing in the Phasma Frights. The fact that we see the scrapyard, we see scrap someone like made of scrap metal or something, we see a pendant that heals people. Honestly, all of it is associated with Eleanor. I'm wondering if we're actually going to see Eleanor who has come out of these weird nightmares that uh, that uh, the Stitch Wraith inflicted on her at the end of the Phasma Frights. That's, hmm, this is, ev this is very cool. I am excited to see where this goes. Um, tell me in the comments if you're excited and I will probably see you in another video later when there's an even longer <laughs> an even longer preview uh, anyway thank you guys so much for watching and uh, yeah I will see you in another video goodbye